So the sponsor of today's video is Skillshare, and this is really great timing because this will get you your introduction into Python for my upcoming videos, where I'll be teaching you how to create your own AI or train your own AI and set up the environments in order to get cracking at it. Now you will need some basic Python in order to get going, creating your reward systems once I start the tutorial. And not only that, the first 1000 signups that use the links below will get a free premium membership, and that will open you to so many other classes. You have so so many things to go through. We have web development, applied control systems for engineering, speed controllers, so many crazy cool things, social media stuff, photography things that I'm just barely scratching the surface. In today's video, we're taking a look at an all new board from Flywoo. Now this is called the Goku GN745. It's an all in one crazy B type board that's rated up to 40 amps. Not only that, it has an F7 barometer and a 9 volt regulator, which is pretty freaking insane. And check this out. They even provide you with an XT60. Now, this is a huge telltale sign that says, yes, put us on a big, heavy, demanding build. And that is exactly what we will be doing in an upcoming video. So this one right here is called the AIO stack. Obviously you get the flight controller, ESC, everything is built into this board here. And they also do provide you with a video transmitter that's rated up to 600 milliwatts and can be mounted on 20 by 20 crazy B type boards and 30 by 30s. Now again, this one is the 25 point something by 25 point something. So it's the crazy B type boards that get installed just like this. So what we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the accessories, the advanced breakdown of the board, and also beginner setup guide if you guys don't know how to connect it because it can be maybe a bit difficult to connect for some newcomers because you will have to solder to those little uh, lines right there also. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at some of the accessories. So if you do get the kit, you get an XT60 cable. And when you're installing the XT60 cable, actually keep this in mind. Make sure you take note of which one is positive so you don't accidentally uh, crisscross them and then you fry everything. So you do get the XC60, we get our video transmitter, and we also get a 470 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. So I'm guessing, don't put it on a 6S, uh, but we'll take a closer look at that on the advanced breakdown. Uh, they also give you some wires, some really long metal screws, and everything you need for a M2 type uh, mounting solution here. Now for the flight control, these will be M2 holes once you put the rubber grommets, because it does come with rubber grommets. And we also do have our pigtail here. And that's really about it for the accessories. All right, guys, so now we're gonna do the advanced breakdown of the Goku 45 amp all-in-one board here. Now this thing can take 45 amps, which is pretty damn insane, actually. Now let's go ahead and make sense of everything we have here. So this right here looks like it's onboard flash memory, which is really, really nice to see here. Uh, we have our MPU 6000 gyro. And also if we take a look down here, we have a barometer here. Now this is really useful, especially if you're gonna be doing an ultralight build with the GPS setup, which would be really nice to have also, and they did provide it here. Not only that, what, what, what strikes me with this board, it even has a nine volt regulator, a 1.5 amp nine volt regulator, switching regulator. And at the same time, it also does obviously have the five volt. We can see them in this area. We have one in this area and then we have another one around this area right there. So we have those two right there for the uh, voltage, which I really like. And as we can tell also, that they're using dual FET. So this, this is kind of the FETs you'll find on a 20 by 20 ESC that's theoretically rated for 45 amps as well. Um, and that's what we see here. We see here's one, two, three, for example, and then the other ones are on the other side. So this is a nice sign. Uh, usually means more durability than to have the FETs, uh, both FETs being one package. And this is much better to see here. Uh, here we have our microcontrollers for the uh, for the ESCs, and we also have our FET drivers right here. Now, if you take a closer look at filtration, it's it's not that great, and I don't blame them. There isn't much space to put anything. However, if we look at the battery pads, we also do have holes for that. Uh, so you can stick that capacitor right in those holes, and that's what she said. And <laughs> so yeah, you do have holes for your capacitor's legs if you wanted to put those in there. I'm sure many of you would love to put those in there, and um, including myself. <laughs> and again, this is an F7. So what's really nice, again, is we're not going to have to worry about where to put our IBUS, SBUS, or TBS crossfire signal. It has inbuilt inversion. There's a couple things that I kind of don't like about this board, which is uh, these connectors. These are actually, you know, the, uh, the outermost pads here are different than the innermost pads, and uh, you could easily bridge them. They're very close together. But again, we can't blame them. This is an 8-gram board, which is insane uh, to pack this much power. 
And I'm guessing we're going to be seeing a lot more of these come out and just become more and more and more reliable as time goes on right now. Uh, so it's a really nice thing to see that there's a lot of change. And again, this is whoop season and all the regulations. This is what the regulations is uh, uh, pushing people to create here is just something smaller, lighter and just as good if possible. And now let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide. We're going to start off with the FPV camera and move along. All right, so for the first thing, we're going to go ahead and start again with the camera here. Uh, what we're going to look for first is the power. So we want 5 volts in ground. And again, always install your camera on 5 volts, uh, even if it takes more because you reduce the chances of having any issues here. So for 5 volts, you want to go ahead and grab it from that line. Take note of where the USB is right here. And that's where you want to install it. These are very tiny pads, so you need to brush up on your soldering skills, possibly. All right, next we're going to go ahead and do the video line, which is going to be the one on the edge right here. And that's just going to go straight. The Usually it's the yellow line on the uh, camera most of the time. Uh, all the time, actually. I haven't seen any other camera has a different color. And the last one, we're going to need ground, which is going to be this last one. And that'll just go straight to your ground of your camera. And just like that, you're done. So here, this is the 5 volt. Make sure you stick it on a 5 volt. That's, that's something you always want to do with a camera. And now let's go ahead and jump to the video transmitter part. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the video transmitter part. Now you need to take something into consideration before you actually uh, approach this step is you need to make sure your video transmitters input voltage. Now there's two types in the market. There's ones that take five volt and ones that take battery voltage. We'll just call that VBAT. This usually means seven volts and above. So anything above seven volts, you'll see them seven to 26, seven to 21. You'll see all kinds of stuff. So that means battery voltage video transmitter and we have the five volt. Here I'm gonna show you both. And the only difference is going to be where the red wire would connect to. Because if you put VBAT into a five volt video transmitter, you're going to fry it and you don't want that. Now we'll start with the VBAT type of transmitter which takes battery voltage here. And the place where you wanna grab that from is right over here. I've already pre-marked them so I don't mess up in the video and don't have you install something incorrectly here. So we're gonna call this the VBAT line. So this is VBAT. Now, if you have a five volt video transmitter, the place you're gonna to wanna to connect the red wire is going to be on this pad right here. These are gonna be a bit difficult to uh, set up and we're just gonna do that like that. We'll just that and there we go. And there we go. So this is the five volt. If you had a five volt video transmitter, that's where you wanna connect your red line. Battery voltage right there. Let's go ahead and erase this now. So the next line you want to do is preferably ground. So we just get rid of the power here. And it's usually the black wire on your video transmitter. But here we're doing it white since our uh, background is basically black. And there we go. And that would be ground. Next we're going to want to do is the video. That's very important because that's going to output the video down to your goggles. Well, to the VTX and then down to your goggles. And like just like that, we have our video line, which is usually the yellow line. Last but not least is either IRC or TRAMP protocol depending on your video transmitter and you're going to want to set that up right here. And that right there is UART5. So UART5, if you didn't know that, in the Betaflight Supports tab under peripherals where you find UART5, make sure you select Smart Audio or IRC TRAMP protocol and that'll allow you to change the channels and output power through the on-screen display without having to come here and pressing the button constantly. So if you didn't know how to set that up, you really don't need it, but it's really nice if you if you ever figure it out. And that's really it for the video transmitter part. Let's go ahead and jump into the receiver section now. All right guys, so right now what we're gonna do is cover the receivers. So we have usually three types of receivers, IBUS, SBUS, and a TBS Crossfire. I'm gonna cover every single one of those right now. Now what's really nice is this is an F7. So most of these will connect into the same place. Uh, except the TBS has an extra wire, which I'll show you where to connect as well. So let's go ahead and start out with the power. So usually all, you know, all receivers take 5 volts unless it's a Spectrum, which takes 3.3 volts. But it's really rare, I think, that people use Spectrum nowadays. So this is where we grab our 5 volt from. Now make sure you keep an eye on that. It's the edge pad. The second one down is our 5 volts. It's actually called 4.5 volts. And the reason why they call it 4.5 volts is when you install the USB, it actually gives power to the receiver, which could be very useful when binding or debugging uh, specific issues here. The next one we're going to do is going to be the uh, ground wire. And it's going to be the one right under it, right over here. And just like that, we have our ground. So uh, the TBS, IBUS, and the SBUS will connect their power exactly in the same place. Now we're going to do the signal wires, which are the most important parts here. Let's start with SBUS. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now we're going to go here 
And what we want to do is we want to bypass the front row and go to the third one down. If you take note of the USB here, it's going to be the third one down on the right, which is that one. So I'm just going to kind of go in between right here and go right there. So this would be S bus, also I bus in the same location, which is really nice. That's why it's an F7. And the TX pad of the TBS Crossfire is going to be connected into the same place. So all those will connect to the same place if you have them. Now the RX is going to connect to a different place. Uh, it's going to be right there because the TBS has two, two, two pads basically or two wires to connect. And you're going to want to do that right there. So we're going to set that up like that. Boom. The RX is going to be on that edge and on the innermost part is going to be the uh, the TX part for the TBS crossfire as you can tell down here. And IBUS and SBUS connect to that same place where the TX is connected to and that's about it here. So again, everything is linked down below if you can check those out as Greatly Support Channel and come join our Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways there. You have a lot of other things also. Uh, VIP access to a lot of websites and stuff and um, you get a lot of perks and it does help support the channel. And well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.